welcome back to Metabolic Flexibility Series. Today I want to talk to you about what exactly is metabolic flexibility. All I know is I'm exhausted, I'm tired, I've been to a number of doctors, I, I can't work, I can't focus, I can't concentrate, I have problems with um, stress, I don't handle it very well, they tell me that nothing's wrong with me or I'm on a bunch of medications, I'm spending thousands of dollars, um, my insurance doesn't cover what I really need, um, I know I do a lot of research on this stuff. I've even seen you, Dr. Rose, and I know you're the ninja. And, uh, you know, this metabolic flexibility, what the heck does that mean? Well, I'm going to give you the formula for metabolic flexibility. Basically, and, and I do want to give um, recognition to recognition where it's due. And Dr. Uh, it's Alexander Ferretti. Um, I learned about him at Dr. Lynch's uh, Shy conferences. Um, he's a friend of mine. I've done interviews with him. I'll leave a link to the interview under this video. Um, and he's the one that, at least as far as I know, I've learned this concept about. And I want to let him know that I appreciate that. And I'm not, it's not my concept, but I put my little spin on it. So anyways, stress over blood glucose. The bigger that number is, the more flexibility we have. The lower that number is, the less flexibility we have. So let's talk about that for a second. Stress. What is stress? Stress is three major things I'm going to talk to you about. It's the food that we eat. Believe it or not, it's stressful. If it's toxic, or if it's GMO'd, or if there's bacteria, or if there is pesticides, or, you know, it's just not healthy, it's synthetic, it's processed, it's sugary. Um, food can be very, very stressful, not to mention the proteins in food. So gluten, dairy, egg, corn, soy, rice, potato, quinoa, all of those things are very, very inflammatory, and that's going to increase your stress, okay? So um, that's the main thing that's going to happen. Um, also, cytokines. So TNF-alpha, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, uh, um, uh, what else do we have? We have uh, TH17, interferon gamma. There's a lot of these cytokine messengers that's going to increase your stress loads. And then on the bottom, we have glucose. So the higher the glucose, the more insulin resistance you have, um, or maybe you have a reactive hypoglycemia. Your blood sugar is unstable, and that's a dysglycemic thing. So the way we measure stress, it's really cool. I'm just going to give you a little bit of information. I don't want to overwhelm you. It's called heart rate variability. And heart rate variability means um, it's not necessarily how fast my heart beats. It's what's my cadence of my beat. So if you say you have 60 beats per minute, um, it doesn't mean it beats one beat per second. It means it can be ba bump ba bump ba bump ba bump so what heart rate variability is, is it measures that cadence. And we know when we're stressed out, when we have inflammation, when we have an injury, we know that we're in that sympathetic fight or flight, our heart rate variability goes down. It's not very, you know, it's very fast and it's very, very consistent. Whereas when I'm in parasympathetic mode, my heart rate variability goes up. I have more ability to adapt. I see a lion, it goes crazy, and then it goes down, and I'm able to adjust and uh, be flexible. I'm able to be metabolically flexible. So with stress, the higher the stress, the lower the, lower the HRV. And with glucose, with the more instability, the more inflammation, the more insulin resistance, the more reactive hypoglycemia, the higher your glucose number goes. So the higher the glucose, the lower the stress, equal or your, the lower your HRV because of increased stress, hopefully that makes sense, let me repeat it one more time, you're getting stressed, you're under sympathetic dominance, you don't have a lot of parasympathetic activity, there's inflammation, there's cytokines, there's food reactivities, there's toxic exposures, there's infections, there's trauma, there's all this stuff that's causing your heart rate variability to go down. As a result, as well, your glucose levels go up and that number, heart rate variability, which represents stress, and glucose, which represents inflammation and unstable blood sugar levels, is going to be a very low number. And you're going to be very, very metabolically inflexible. So what I want to talk to you about now, though, is insulin. And everything you thought you thought about insulin, throw it out the window. Insulin, oh, I know what insulin does. It, it helps get your glucose into the, into the cell. 
and without insulin it won't go in there. That's incorrect and I'm going to show you what that's all about on the next video. So stay